Hi, welcome to the Potter's Roundtable. This is Pottery Shorts, a series of short pottery topics done on the fly. Welcome to the Potter's Roundtable, a monthly podcast where we share our passion for the ceramic arts and a collection of topics specific to potters. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Enjoy the show. This is Pottery Shorts. Um, I'm Phil Bernberg, and this, is, this topic today is making use of specific gravity with the question, is it too specific? Okay, so let's start with what is specific gravity? Well, specific gravity is the weight of something compared to the weight of an equal volume of water. So it's really telling you sort of how much heavier is it than water. So, and specific gravity number is just a ratio. So I'm dividing a weight by a weight and I just get a number like 1.2. There are no units like pounds or inches or anything like that because it's just, it's just the, the proportion of the ratio of weight to weight. It's really simple. So for glazes, specific gravity is an indication of the relative amounts of the solid glaze materials and the water. Okay? And if you think about it, all the glaze recipe, all the glaze ingredients that we use, all these powders, the rocks and the minerals, they're all heavier than water. So for a particular glaze, if I have one particular glaze in mind and then measure the specific gravity, if it has a higher specific gravity, it means it has less water. And if I make it up another time and it has a lower specific gravity, it has more water. Because when I mix the two materials together, the water and the powders, the powders are always heavier than the water. So the more powder I have, the heavier the specific gravity number I'm going to get. Okay. So specific gravity, but we don't care so much about the proportion specifically. What we're really using it for is to judge how thick or watery a glaze is, how fluid is the glaze, so that when I dip it, for instance, how thick a coating am I going to get, how concentrated is the glaze. That's really why I care about the specific gravity. So the best method for actually measuring or determining specific gravity is really what is what's called absolute specific gravity, where I'm actually going to get a, a, a definite number. And the way I recommend this, and there's a really easy way to do it. What you do is you weigh a certain volume of water, and it can be any volume of water. It might be just, for instance, and not a, you don't want a small amount like a thimble full, but maybe like if you have a measuring cup, like a cup of water, and you've, got, you've already got the graduations on the cup. So you just weigh, weigh a cup of water, and then weigh the same volume, that same cup of glaze. And then you just, and then, so the specific gravity is just the weight of the glaze. This is the liquid glaze divided by the weight of the water. Okay? Now, because the glaze has the powders in it, as well as instead of water, or what, it's going to be, it's always going to be heavier. It's always, so it's always going to be more than one. So you might get something like, like that 1.2. Because the, 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 the glaze having the powders is heavier than the plain water. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. And consider becoming a patron of our channel. Visit www.patreon.com and search for the Potter's Roundtable. Any amount you give will support the creation of a digital library of educational videos and podcasts to support artists, potters, and educators now and into the future. If you would like more information about our membership studio, classes, events, and multimedia productions at Washington Street Studios, visit our website at www.hfclay.com. Okay, now some people use a, hydro a, hyd a hydrometer for, me for measuring the, the glazes, and you'll see, a hydrometer is a tool, that a lot of times they're made out of glass, and they look kind of like this. And they'll have like lead shot or something in the bottom. This is a glass tube, and it has marks here, and this is graduated so that you can read like 1.2, oh, you know, 1.10, and you can read the specific gravity numbers right off of this. And this is based on, you put this in the, in the liquid, and it floats, and it sinks, depending on the specific gravity, it sinks to a certain amount, and you can read it off it. The problem is, hydrometers were not made for suspensions. 
They were made for solutions. And there are times when they will not give an accurate number. For instance, it, depending on the flow properties of the material, if the material is very thixotropic, remember that's where you stir it and it moves and you, you don't and it sits, it can affect the reading that you get. So I, I personally, a lot of people use hydrometers for doing this, I personally don't recommend it. When it's so easy to do this, this will give you a number that there are no sources of error basically for this. This is possible. If you have a glaze that's very thixotropic or dilatant, it can affect the numbers that you get with a hydrometer. These are meant for solutions. These are used, for instance, winemakers use hydrometers a lot because when you dissolve sugar in water, it increases the specific gravity of the liquid and you need a certain amount of sugar to make a certain amount of alcohol. So they use these for solutions for things, but they really weren't intended for suspensions. Okay. So the, 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 really, the, the, the really reason why we might want to know about specific gravity for pottery is to make our glaze, if once we make up a glaze and we get it to the, 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 the water, the, the balance between the solids and the water, just the way we want it, and we say, this is perfect. Every time I make it up in the future, I want to make it up the same way again. And that's, that's, the really, that's the way we can use specific gravity. So what you do is, when you've made up a glaze that you really like and you've gotten it to the proportions that you like, Weigh, that, weigh an amount of it, weigh a cup of it, and just write down the weight, okay? So now the next time when you make up that glaze again, weigh the same amount and just look at the weight. If the weight is heavier, if the new batch is, is, is a heavier weight than the last one, what does that tell you? You've got too much powder. If it's lighter than the last weight, You've got too much water. It doesn't matter what the actual numbers are. It doesn't matter what the specific gravity number is. All you, do, all you have to look at it because you know that the powders make it heavier. So if it's lighter than last time, it means I don't have enough powder. I add more powder to it. And, you can and that's all you need to, to adjust your, your glazes. Okay? So, and again, some people, for, to do that, instead of, they'll make up their own sort of little hydrometer with maybe like, um, this will be like a piece of wood and they'll have a weight on the bottom like with washers and they'll make a little, and they'll just say, okay, it came up to the third mark from the bottom, so that's what I'm gonna like. Again, I don't recommend that just because it's not nearly as accurate and as reproducible as just doing the weights, and the weight is so simple. So, the, returning to my question initially in the title was my sort of sarcastic question about specific gravity, is it too specific? I, I mentioned that because some glaze recipes actually include, when you look at the recipe, they actually include a suggested or a recommended specific gravity for use. To me, that's baloney because there are so many things that the specific gravity depends on. It depends on, for instance, your personal preference. One person might like a thicker glaze for their particular work than somebody else. It depends on the method of application. For example, let's say you're spraying the glaze. Well, the air pressure and the nozzle size are gonna determine what's the best specific gravity. And so if you have a different nozzle size, then a different specific gravity is probably gonna work better. And you don't know what that is. How absorbent the clay is gonna affect it. Your bisque firing temperature and the clay body you're using determines how absorbent the clay is when you dip it in the glaze. So one person's bisque is gonna have a higher absorbency than another, so they're gonna want a different specific gravity. And even the source of the raw materials, there can be variations. So there are so many things that can affect it that to me, the only thing that I, I'm not even sure the value of, of, of having somebody recommending a number is that maybe it gives you a starting point but to me, I'm still going to want to experiment myself and determine what's the best thing that I like. So what I recommend is adjust the glaze to the, yourself to work with your materials and your recipe, and then, and then record the, the specific gravity or record the weight. Okay? Thank you very much. I hope this was useful. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the presentation, please like it and subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends. This way we get more viewers of our, of our videos. Also check out our website, www.hfclay.com. We'd really like to thank our patrons for supporting our educational efforts such as these videos. And if you'd like to consider becoming a patron, go to patreon.com and look for the Potter's Roundtable. The Potter's Roundtable is brought to you by Washington Street Studios and our patrons. If you enjoy the show, please subscribe, give us a five-star review, and tell your friends. If you want to learn more about Washington Street Studios and shared studio memberships, please visit our website at www.hfclay.com. Thank you, and we'll see you again next time on The Potter's Roundtable.